Back in the Cold War, we didn't have the same technology that we have now. The advancements that have been made throughout that time, which have been projected onto our aircraft and through our bomber force, isn't necessarily the same that other countries can say they have done. We've done a good job at maintaining superiority in the air, as well as advancing our systems on the plane. Whereas, yeah, our plane sooner or later is going to be 100 years old, but the systems and what that plane has aren't 100 years old. They're current with the times. The B-52 lurched forward, near scraping along the top of the jet, the B-52 passes underneath the KC-135. The B-52 first flew in the 1950s. This groundbreaking strategic bomber was originally designed to wage nuclear war against the Soviet Union. And while that original purpose never came to fruition, the B-52 played a key role in conventional combat operations in Vietnam and the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. And today, after decades of upgrades and modifications, this Cold War era aircraft is once again lethal and survivable in a high-end fight against modern adversaries such as China and Russia. We've demonstrated for the last 70 years that nuclear weapons, as horrific as they are, are used every day. They've sustained a strategic deterrence for this nation for 75 years. And we work hard, as I said earlier, to ensure we've got the right safeguards in place, the right training, the right professional, capable, ready airmen to execute those missions. With the 96 bomb squadron, we were the first one, to, first bomb squadron to drop a bomb in combat. So we have long, long lines of legacy. And thinking about the date, even back during Vietnam, with hundreds of B-52s flying missions all the time. You know, it definitely sinks in how many people went before us and that we're paving the way for a lot of people to go after us, and it, which will be in the same aircraft, seeing how long these are scheduled to fly for. Preparation for tomorrow's flight, I'm doing a full day of ejection seat training and parachute training. While this is just a small part of what bomber air crews go through, all of today's prep does underscore that going for a flight in a B-52, even as a civilian who's just along for the ride, is a lot more serious than being a passenger on a commercial airline. Over to my side, trying to roll to my back. Now, we're in the cockpit of a B 52 bomber, completing our pre flight checks before today's mission. It's amazing looking at these old round dials, thinking about the generations of pilots who have flown in this aircraft. This mission is not obsolete. This new era of competition with China and Russia. The job of strategic deterrence is just as important as it probably ever has been. ESP is at A. Steer ratio is takeoff and lands. Tunnels are next. All right, throttles are coming up. For one, about three. Six 
shift blank as you get right up to overhead. Perfect. And when it goes out? When it goes out, he's about to make contact. Sweet. Want a few flashes, up or down. Practicing aerial refueling before we move on to a range where we will simulate the use of some of the aircraft's weapons. All right, let's fly the same aircraft, for instance. It's kind of that's something you don't see in other platforms, so. Uh, thankfully, we have a lot more updated systems than what they used to have, but, uh, good. Later, come slow. Come back to center line for me. Continue. That's flare. Minus 10. 15. All right, throttle line, all air brakes are 6. Hold the shoot. Hold the shoot. Point for 100. Eight board at one tenth. As I walk around this B-52, I can't help but think about Vietnam and Strategic Air Command and the incredible history of these jets. It really is a testament to the B-52's original design, as well as the efforts of maintainers over the decades, that these Cold War era bombers are still at the leading edge of American combat operations, and they will remain so until at least 2050.